Um, anyway, uh, every time I take about a fifth of my HP, it shocks me again. And then um, <laughs> it heals up. when I heal up over it, then if I take that damage again, I get shocked again. So if I ow, were to go all the way down ow, to zero ow, HP, it would shock me on uh, all five levels. Ow, which is not terribly fun. I'm nexusing. That sucks! Why the hell did I make this? So yeah, basically, I'm an idiot. This is a project that I've been working on for the last couple of weeks, and I've had a friend helping me with it, you'll see him in the video, and it's coding sessions, there's electrical engineering, there's soldering, I didn't even know how to pronounce soldering before I started this project, but hey, figured it out along the way. Um, messing with Arduinos and their interface was a little tricky, but hey, figured it out, something called Pyformata helped me along the way, so I could use Python code in my... Uh, shot collar. It's kind of dumb, but so am I, so it works pretty well. Anyway, this is a shot collar that hurts you when you take enough damage in Realm of the Mad God. I hope you enjoy it as much as I have. It sucks. Yep, this is the first test, the first real proper in-game test of the Zappy Boy 9000. We're going to be giving it the old college try right here. So as you can see, we've got our code window open, our command prompt. We're going to launch up the shock.py. It's all in Python. This is the code over here. You can, um, I don't care, you can look it up later if you want. But it launches up Zappy Boy 9000, which is this wonderful little <laughs> window. If you can't read it, it says arm, disarm, quit. Um, and it's currently disarmed, which is why it says armed equals false down here. But as you can see, I have a, a, a shock collar for dogs attached to my bicep. Um, my left arm, my controller keys. This is my buddy who helped me design it, by the way. Come come lean into the frame. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's friendly. Um, he did the electrical engineering and soldering. I did the coding, and uh, we, we attached a dog collar. And when I take damage, it's going to shock me. So let's... um. Let's give it a shot with just the, uh, let's arm it real quick by clicking arm, armed, true, don't like that. The quit button is, is good though, it quits it immediately. And if I put on a ring of decades, it's going to drop my HP to half and we're just going to see if it shocks me twice. God damn it! <laughs> oh, I hate it! I hate it! <laughs> Okay, now we're going to give it another shot, but this time we're going to do it in Godlands with actual monsters, um, for better or for most likely worse. Let me just get my sleeve back up, um, Mothership Bicep O'Clock, and oh god, it's so uncomfortable to have it on and, and just know that it's coming. Alright, we're running shock.py. Damn it. <laughs> it's the worst idea I've ever had. Actually, you know what? We are doing T6 Tome. Thanks for the help with this. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. I bet you love this, don't you? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. So last time we had some issues with the battery coming disconnected, but we should have fixed that in this in this test. And it's once I take about 150 damage, I think, on this character is when I start getting shocked. So we're safe. It's not shocking me yet. But if I eat a couple more bullets... Oh, <laughs> Oh god. Oh, that That's yeah, that just that scares ya. Oh. Test three, with slightly longer sleepy times. Three, 
time. All right, suit up. Eat this thing. <laughs> Ow! Yeah, that worked. Ah. Oh man. Yep. All right, let's try two shocks now. This will be one. Ow. Yeah. Yeah. I bet. Oh no. Okay, so it's not. Ow. Uh. Yeah. I bet it did. Um. There's three. Okay. Ah. So it it has them saved up. Oh. And I can't cancel it while it's they're saved up. Alright guys, so we do have a pretty much official final version here of this Zappy Boy 9000. I'm going to put the collar back on. This is the hopefully final test of it. I've changed the code up a bit so you can see here where we used to have it as um, just checking every time to see if um, any section had been reached and then trying to shock that many times. Uh, any section of our HP bar that is and trying to shock that many times. Now I have it checked to see if I've taken more damage than the previous amount of damage that I had taken. So it measures it in quarters, so each quarter of the HP bar, in case like, you know, if a night elf hits me or something, I don't want to get shocked for that. If a god or two god shots hit me, then I take damage. You know, it's something that I don't have to worry about it, and when it comes, it will be a surprise. So, we're going to go ahead and step in here. There's a nice uh, Septavius thing, Ghost God, whatever. Ow! Oh, yep, no, she works good. So that's one. If we get down to half HP, it shocks me again. If we heal up over half HP and then take more damage, it does shock you again. And that's a th level three there. You can see we got all the way down, so that... That hurts. That really hurts. Um, so you can see it prints out, it was printing out the previous damage as well as um, when I do take damage, it prints out the amount of damage I've taken. So if I take a little bit here, oh god, this paladin's too good. I can, ow! Ow, yep. You'll see it prints 1-1 one, one, and 2-2 two, two over here, and that's um, printing out what the damage was and then what the previous damage gets set to. The previous damage was actually 1 when the damage was 2, that's why it shocked me. Ow, 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 ow. Ow, god damn it. I forgot you can't just take like a couple damage from these things. Because if you take 150 damage, even if you heal it right away with your pet, no, don't hit me for any more damage. Um, <laughs> this is awful. This is the worst thing ever. It really teaches you not to get hit in Realm though. So I'm just going to try not to get hit for a while. Yeah, I, it, what it does is it takes color, color detection software from my Realm window. So it finds my yeah, Realm window. And it um, <laughs> it detects my HP bar and it checks for the certain red color. So every color has what's called like a hex value, which is the code for it. And um, when it finds that color, I'm just afraid here. When it finds that color, it checks if it turns to gray. And if it does turn to the specific gray, then it knows to shock me. And um, it's just unpleasant. Um, it's so hard to talk when you're afraid of getting shocked. Do I watch Michael Reeves and William Osmond? Dude, I love Michael Reeves. You're right, this is really Michael Reeves right here. This is probably the stupidest thing I've ever come up with. It's something he would do. Next, I need a laser that shines in my eye every time I'm at full HP. There we go, perfect. Finally, some good gods. Ah! Yep. And I did put it on my arm instead of my neck because A, neck might be bad for me. I don't out, no. Um, and B, uh, my Nexus key is down there. So, you know, got to gotta do that. And, uh, yeah, take decorating off and put it back on. That's actually how I tested this thing. Um, so, ow, make it zap every time you Nexus. I could do that so easily. Oh, text recognition software, here we come. Yeah, we're totally doing that. All right, don't hurt me. Don't you hurt me. Ow, oh, the Medusa got me with that full shotgun. That... God, glad you like the videos. Um, yeah. Oh no, that's that's a beholder. Ow, man. One is not hurting. One is hurting. I can assure you, one is hurting. When I do take damage, like that. Ow, no, no. Oh god. Oh god. Okay. See, none of those shots hurt. So I'm. Oh. I I've been testing this so long that I. I ow. Ah. God.
shucks. I wouldn't say that I'm desensitized to it by any means, but um, it's at the point I can't speak. That hurt. It does hurt. Um, I think it's more fun than painful, though, so I do enjoy it. I'm having a blast. Get over here, buddy. Ow! This is great. Oh my god. This is See, this is a great way to train yourself to be better at Realm of the Mad God, because look how much less damage I'm taking now that there's actual, actually some risk to it. Like, a couple of pixels on the screen, who cares? But we're talking, you know, a little, a little zappy zap. It's a good time. But there we go. And now we rush. Ow, 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 ow. I'm next to sing. So how does this whole wonderful contraption work? Well, first things first, we've got our Arduino. This thing here receives packets that come in from my computer in the form of little electrical impulse thingies. Those come in through this wire, feed into it, and they control some of the pins along here. There's little black dots. That sends an impulse to this wire, which goes to a transistor. The transistor thing here is sort of acting as an on-off switch that tells the button on this Wi-Fi transmitter that came with the shock collar tells the button when to close. So if you push down on the button, normally what would happen is it would sort of connect two little gate thingies like this. So you can see it's open there, it'd go to this, which allows electricity to flow through under the button. When that happens, these little uh, thingies create a Wi-Fi signal, I don't know what they're called, I'm not an electrical engineer, which sends a little Wi-Fi thingy out through here to the collar. Then the collar receives that, and it knows to send some of its charge through these terminals here, which are touching my bicep, which is what shocks me. So that's pretty much what happens. The 9 volt here is only for controlling the transmitter. It doesn't have any influence on the battery in this shock collar. It just controls the transmitter. And I set all this up with approximately $40 worth of uh, Arduinos, breadboards, and um, I, got the, I got the collar for free from my grandpa. Thanks, dude. stabbed a little bit. <laughs> As for the coding side of this project, you can see I have one file called shock.py. That controls everything in the program, and it has a def main function here, which is essentially a giant loop that keeps checking it every half a second, and shocking me if need be. I'm going to explain it a little bit, but I also wanted to mention this one other file here called shock testing. This, as you can see, is a bunch of code that I've mostly copy and pasted from the internet that was related to the user interface, related to the sleeping functions to make it wait between different checks, and also related to the Arduino itself, which was really important trying to get lights to blink and pins to come on. So what I'd do is I'd figure out how things worked in this program, and then I'd switch over to the shock thing and actually implement them and tie them all together to make one functioning good program. So what it does here is it has these different libraries called tkinter, win32gui, time, and pyfermata arduino. tkinter is what controls that window called zappyboy9000, which is something I can interact with instead of having to type into my command prompt, so I can arm it, disarm it just with the click of a button. Windows32gui is watching my operating system and the windows within it, and it's telling me different feedbacks on whether or not the... Um, Windows changing, things like that, I can look at specific pixels in a window, and that comes in really big handy in a second here, as you'll see. Time is just allowing me to time out the program and put different stops in there to make sure that I don't overload the Arduino with too many requests. And from PyFormata, we see Arduino here, which is just letting me use Python to interact with an Arduino instead of the Arduino development environment, which is, I believe, in something that's like C or something like that. This allows me to use Python instead and communicate directly through USB with my little Arduino. Going on, we can see this is just a comment. That means it's not in the code. If you know what Python is, you'll kind of know what comments and things like that are. These are just reference targets for coordinates if I need them. Here's the actual coordinates. Since scaling's a little bit weird on 4K, I had to write these down and do some math to figure out where my window actually was. But I did get the program to track the window, so anywhere on the screen, it can find where my health bar is in Realm of the Mad God, which is really helpful. These references right here are just the colors of the health bar, the red and the gray. 
And just so you know, there's like a 1 in 345 quadrillion chance of a combination of two colors being the same as this one. So it's extremely statistically impossible for this code to ever accidentally shock me on the basis of thinking that I got damaged. Get Pixel Color is just a simple program that tracks my window using the Win32 GUI and checks what color this specific pixel is on my health bar there to see if it's changed from red to gray. Check Targets uses this Get Pixel Color here to check four different spots on my health bar to see if they've taken enough damage to turn different colors, and it returns how many spots have taken damage so it knows how many times to shock me in the program. Armed equals false and keep equals true are both controlling while loops, which are loops that keep the program running um, indefinitely until I change that. Keep equals true is a boolean that I use to just any program that I make, I always know that that one is going to be essentially the biggest while loop that keeps the entire program running all the time. It's a personal preference. Armed equals false is more specific to it only checks targets when I have the program armed by clicking that arm button. Now the main loop is the entire program essentially, it's all housed in here. Everything else is just functions that get referenced by the main loop. But global armed and global keep are these two things here. And previous damage comes in handy when I'm checking if I have taken damage more than the previous amount I'd taken. 4 equals Arduino COM4 just tells my computer where it can find the specific USB cable to the Arduino that I need to send signals. Now we've got quit, arm, and disarm, which just tell the program if it needs to do something. And this is all graphical user interface stuff, don't worry about it, it's just, I just did some tinkering with it, named it ZappyBoy9000, and put the picture of a leprechaun in the top corner. The real meat of the program is in while keep here, which runs the program entirely until I hit quit. Root.update just updates that user interface to see if anything's happened. And if it is armed, it checks all the targets to see if I've taken any damage, and then it prints out, this is mostly for debugging purposes, but it prints out shock for the amount of times I've taken damage, and it also writes to the Arduino board, this is the most important thing here, turns on pin 8, which connects the Wi-Fi transmitter, yada yada, you saw that already, and it shocks me. So that was a lot of the testing, I was figuring out how to work with the Arduino using Python, and this is the exact code lines that I needed here. Since the shock lasts two-thirds of a second, I had to do time sleep 1 so that it waits one second between shocks, and then it can go ahead and go again if I'm still taking damage, because it's checking for that. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I shocked myself. That's really it. If you guys want to see more videos of me coding stuff for Realm the Mad God in the future, I was thinking it could do a cool thing where like I voice the entirety of Realm the Mad God just like in that kind of cringy silver dollar video, and then I make it recognize text on the screen, and every time someone says something, it says it in my voice. Um, if you want to see that, let me know. If you want to see something else, let me know. I really enjoyed working on this though. I've never done something like this in the past, and actually it really rekindled my passion for coding. So. Hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. I'll see you in the next video, and uh, don't forget to hit like if you want me to get shocked again. <laughs>